Hey, what's up guys? Before I hit the play on this video, I want to tell you a little story about John Mayer and myself. So I actually met him a couple of times in New York um, and the story goes like this. I used to play this gig in the Lower East Side. It was this kind of like Sunday jazz gig that we played for a couple of years. And one time we were playing it and playing with this uh, friend of mine, great cat, uh, Colin Stranahan on drums. And um, in the middle of the gig he says like, man, it's John Mayer. And I was like, cool. After the set, I go up to him and say like, "Hey man, uh, you wanna you wanna sit in?" He's like, "No, it's it's fine." Like you know, I'm like, nah, "Man, it's super chill. Come, you know, sit in." And he's like, "No." And then we start talking about some guitar stuff and music. He tells me about Berkeley and you know, and it's kind of nice conversation. Play another set. Um, I go up to him again. He's like, "Man, come sit in." He's like, "He's like, no." It's like, "Okay, whatever." The gig ends. We go back home. I talk with Colin. And, Colin, and I asked Colin, I was like, man, so who's your friend? He's like, man, it was John Mayer. And I was like, yeah, yeah, right, John Mayer. Kind of type on my phone, get back home. I Google this dude. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> and one of the things that impressed me, and it's kind of funny thinking that, was that uh, my hero, Brad Mello, was playing some shows. So there were some shows with um, both of them on YouTube. I was like, oh my God, amazing. So. After that, I obviously checked his music and it was great. And he actually came to that spot um, for like a month or so, like every week. So it was kind of nice and, and chill. And then I always kind of said hi and talked a little bit. It was really nice. In any case, I want to listen to this song because um, it's a beautiful song. I, I, a lot of people know this song, but this is a live version I haven't checked out yet. And I'm, I just found it like literally like 10 minutes ago. And I was like, wow, this is super cool. I want to make a video about it and kind of listen together and talk about it. So here we go. Even that, right? Uh, like that. I mean, those bands, like... So we're in the key of G major, which is actually the original kind of song, if I remember. Uh, the original key of the song. Um, and yeah, those bands, those microtone... Oh, man, so good. Um, yeah. So good. I mean, he's right now playing a lot of major pentatonic, so kind of like, you know, you can say E minor pentatonic, but it's really G major pentatonic, right? It's this kind of sound. Just here. And he just did like this little kind of flat three to the three. Let's listen more. Mm. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm stopping every phrase. Just so good. Um, like yeah, it, again, he's using way more bands than I'm doing, but he's kind of playing the the six to the to the five, and this kind of like a little bendy two uh, two to the one. And this is the first time actually. I mean, it's just been a few seconds, but he's, he goes like um, um, right, really clearly, kind of like playing that B flat a little more, and that's the minor pentatonic, which is kind of cool to play this game of using the major pentatonic versus the minor pentatonic. And this is something that John Mayer actually does uh, in general in his solos and music really, really well. Um, basically, right, and this is kind of why I want to talk about it, we can learn so much from these great artists, is we can take the E minor pentatonic, which is sounding great, over the G major, but we can also take the G minor pentatonic or G blues, right, and kind of switch between them. Right now the chords are kind of like G and C, it's so like 1, 4, kind of 12 kind of groove or, or three a big three if you want to feel it that way so mm. that was tough Gravity. it wasn't just me it's working against me wow so good um so it's interesting to see even just the melody when i'm kind of thinking about it so da -da -da. um yeah, this is the six of the G, like the, the E is the six, right? So it's kind of playing that game. So if G major, da -da, gravity, right? Da -da -da, da -da. And that's beautiful. Da -da. I guess it's still G, so it's still um, the three. Da -da. And then I think it does this like. Da -da -da. I just want to listen to it one more time to that like run. Um, just make sure I catch it right. <laughs> it's working 
yeah, 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 yeah. That's the 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 run that I think uh, he plays on the records. I remember there was something there. So so he does this like this like E minor um, kind of run, E minor pentatonic run on that C major, and hitting the melody note, which is E, on the C. So it's like gravity. It is also beautiful. The six to the three. So so cool. Wow. Okay. Mm. Those bricks, everything's so tight. What makes this man? Yeah, so this is really cool. Um, first, of, the, of course, uh, Questlove on drums. Um, I saw like his, his face. I mean, it's you know a sick band to say the least, right? The tightness is amazing. And those breaks give so much air and, and um, vibrance to the music. Everything pops, so it's really, really spacious and just so groovy at the same time it's not easy because it's kind of a slow tempo so it's beautiful how they just like oof so together and that's one of the things i love about music that togetherness this expression um so check this out um i'm just kind of thinking about it right now actually so the b section is kind of like a minor to d7 so it's like or a minor 7 d7 which is great and it goes to b flat major which is a Crazy surprise. Um, I'll read one a little bit. This man with all the D7. Is I can see. And I'm hearing this. So it's really cool because uh, in my to my ears right now this is a two five right to back to G but then total surprise goes to this B flat major seven super beautiful color and then E flat major seven so what is it doing there it's kind of strange but I think the way I'm hearing this right now is like it it feels almost you wanted to go to G minor for a second but it went to this B flat so B flat major seven is actually sort of like a substitution chord that you can use. Um, to, for G minor again, it's not the same chord, but it's oftentimes being used as what we call an upper structure. So you can play this B flat major seven and have the G in the bass, and then you get this basically this like G uh, minor seven nine. This is not exactly what they're doing because they're playing B flat, but it's really nice this like um, relationship between the G major and the G minor that kind of they're hinting at, and then they're going to E flat, which is basically the the sixth degree of G minor. So it's kind of like almost confirming my <laughs> my assumption and then d7 kind of sus and uh and then we basically back home i think let's okay nice alicia keys uh. Listen to that lock with the bass and drums. And her voice, so good. Wow. It's like a spiritual. And then we get in the B section. A minus 7. And can't sustain you. Like one half good. So good. More energy, kind of like more stuff in the drums right here. Like that, uh, what, what Alicia Keys was just playing, kind of like playing with that, like the little bluesy pentatonic stuff on it. I mean, oh. yeah, this is 
is kind of again the same game he's playing this major pentatonic and minor pentatonic uh, relationship so again G is kind of like our center so and of course he has like this beautiful attack and sound and those microtones that um, uh, those little bending that you know um, people sometimes underestimate but what he's doing is really complex and we can hear it of course in all the kind of great uh, artists and, and blues if it's Albert King, B.B. King and you know to name a few but he does it really really freaking well Yeah, I mean, just like starting to go higher. And it's cool how like he built it as well. Right, just like going to these high notes and starting to bend. And still, that same idea with the major. Right, and this is like a kind of like classic, like blues stuff, uh, basically going, using the flat to do the three and kind of, uh, maybe that's not the best finger whatever you want you can do the double stops and all these like these ideas with the double stops and you know it's basically taking two notes from a pentatonic um, what could be cool if you're interested in these double stops and these ideas is taking you know saying like oh I'm taking um, you know the E minor pentatonic for a second and then just like playing two notes like so so just grabbing two notes you're basically kind of playing thirds um, but just like you know the the next note on the scale so if it's so you're playing these together these together these together and then you get these and that's like the highest note we had so far the The audience responds to that. Ah. Wow, this is beautiful. I'm gonna pause it just to say one more thing. So, what's interesting for me with this song is trying to like, um, and basically with music in general, just listening to something and breaking it down and I, I want to talk about it more because I think it's super important because we all have songs that we love and we kind of know but oftentimes we don't really spend the time like oh yeah whatever grab it but actually you know okay this is the melody and how does it sound the bass maybe I can play it on the keys and we can play it on the guitar maybe I can sing it and like learn the lyrics, understand what's happening there harmonically and say, oh, it's the one going to the four, you know. And then the B section does this like, um, you know, the two five, okay, and thinking about harmonically, like kind of tagging that color. That flat six, the sus, or D seven, okay. And, and kind of tagging and thinking about this, information when we're uh, working on music. I think this is one of the most beautiful things that we can um, study from these great artists um, and, and kind of take from them because there's so much beauty and information there and oftentimes it's kind of fun, even more fun than an exercise quote unquote. But then what I like doing is, is also getting the exercises out of this. I'm like, ooh, he played this cool thing, what's going on there? And then I'm like, oh, he played these like double stops, right? He played, you know, two notes together. I'm like, this sounds great. Let me try and find these ideas and how do I do that? Okay, let me think about it. Let me explore and this maybe will kind of um, 
give birth to this exercise that I will practice for a week or two or longer or maybe just a day or two and then I have another idea or another thing in my kind of disposal to express ideas and music. Thank you as always for being here and uh, listening. I hope this was really fun. It's fun for me to listen to this and I'll see you guys very soon. I'm gonna listen just to the end, just why not? <laughs> It's amazing, right? I'll see you soon. Ooh, this is kind of cool too. Maybe next time.